the number one way to kill a motor or ESC on your FPV drone has to be trying to spin the motor when the motor is blocked in some way. For example, you've just crashed in a tree, you're high up in the tree, you can't get to the quadcopter to get it down, and so you are trying to arm the quadcopter, or maybe you're using turtle mode to try and shake the quadcopter out of the tree and get it to tumble back down to the ground. And while you're doing that, there's a branch stuck in the motor, the prop is slapping up against the branch, the motor is trying to spin, but it can't, and those surges of current that the ESC is sending through the motor to try to get it to spin, fry fry the ESC or the motor. But today I'm going to show you a way that you can get Betaflight to sh tell you in your on-screen display that one of your motors is blocked or not spinning correctly. And then you can decide, I don't know what you're going to do, leave the quadcopter up in the tree all day? I'm Joshua Bardwell, you're going to learn something today. I got to give credit for this idea to Yancey Bright who sent me this email. If you crash a lot like me and you're tired of trying to take off only to find one or more of your motors are jammed, try turning on the option that we're going to explore in this video. And I gotta thank Yancey for two reasons. Number one, I didn't know this existed. No, I don't literally know everything there is to know about Betaflight, despite the fact that my tagline is FPV know-it-all. It's just a tagline. Uh, and number two, I thank Yancey because this is the kind of thing that people other than me are going to think is super cool and useful that on first glance, I might have looked at and gone, I can figure out if my props are blocked. When I'm stuck in a tree and trying to get down, the first thing I do is I very gently move the stick to try and determine if the quadcopter is moving or if the motor's blocked. I don't just go hog wild on it. Uh, but... Other people out there, including Nancy, are really going to think this is useful, and so I'm happy to be able to, you know, signal boost it, even though it's not something that I might have at first seen the utility of. So here's my quadcopter. I've got it plugged in. The video transmitter is running, and I've got signal here in the goggles because the warning that we're going to see is going to appear in our on-screen display. I also got to apologize for this fan. It's going to be making some noise that you'll hear, but without that fan, the air unit would overheat and shut down, and this whole thing wouldn't work. Uh, if you want to know more about that fan, I actually made a video about it. I'll put a link in the video description below uh, if you're interested. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to arm the quadcopter, and I want you to look in the upper left-hand corner of the screen right there where it says air. That's where my OSD warning element is going to appear, and that's what we are looking for. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to obstruct one of these motors with my fingers. Ah, did you see it? Ah. <laughs> well, I'm not going to tempt fate by blocking the motor more aggressively to make the warning pop up more obviously. Uh, but what you should see if we go back and we sort of freeze frame it is that oh, the warning pops up ESC1234, except one of those numbers is an R. The R is for RPM warning, meaning that the motor's RPM is unexpectedly low, meaning that the motor is blocked or jammed in some way. And if you feel like having a visible warning that one of your motors is not making the desired or appropriate RPM, then you're gonna to wanna to set this up. And that's what the, next, the rest of the video is gonna be showing you how to do. The simple way to turn this on is to go to the CLI and type set OSD underscore ESC underscore RPM underscore alarm equals 1000. When I saw that, I wondered, well, why are we sending it to 1000? What does that number mean? And I tried to look it up and I can't find any documentation that documents exactly what this number is doing. So I'm just going to follow along with what Yancey told me to do and set it to a thousand. If anybody knows what it does, hmm, I could ask the Betaflight devs. They, someone would probably look in the source code and tell me, but I don't feel like bugging them. So we're just gonna set it to a thousand and type save, but we're not done yet. You see, if I go to the motors tab and I arm the quadcopter, you can see that I'm getting an RPM readout here the flight controller knows the RPM of the motors. And you might think that that would be enough for it to set off this alarm when it detects that the RPM is too low. But it turns out there's two different ways that the flight controller can learn the RPM of the motors. And one of them is that if you are using bi-directional D-shot, bi-directional D-shot reports the RPM of the motors. And that's how most people are gonna be doing it. But if you're doing it that way, this isn't going to work. 
because the alarm only goes off if the RPM of the motors is coming in via ESC telemetry. So here uh, in the ports tab, we can see that we have sensor input ESC and our ESC will need to have a telemetry wire that's going to the flight controller. Now, most ESCs have a telemetry wire and can do ESC telemetry, but a lot of people nowadays don't use ESC telemetry because all of the things that ESC telemetry used to do we either don't need them or something else is doing them like bi-directional D-shot. So if you've never set up ESC telemetry, then this isn't gonna work. Even though the flight controller, gosh darn well knows the RPM of the motors, anytime you're using bi-directional D-shot. Frankly, it seems like this is an oversight in the beta flight code. And it seems like this warning should be updated to look at the RPM, no matter how the RPM is getting into the flight controller. Maybe that's a change that will be made in the future. So. Uh, that's how to get this working. Have ESC telemetry working and enable it in the CLI. And then of course, you're gonna need to go to the OSD and have your warning element. You can see mine's right here, but you should have the warning element in your OSD anyway. That's just really essential to have. Now, if you're interested in learning more about Betaflight Configurator, I've actually got a series of videos I did where I went through every tab of Betaflight Configurator and looked at every option and explained what they are. And if you're the kind of person who thinks that this CLI option is super useful, you'll probably think that's super useful as well. I'm gonna put a card on screen linking to that playlist don't let the fact that it was made for Betaflight 4.3 fool you. 95% of it is still relevant and unchanged in 4.4, and I still think it's well worth your time if you really want to understand all the options in Betaflight. I'll see you there.